Hi, can you hear me, Mark? Yes. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Diane. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for making the time to talk to us here. Anything for you guys, honestly. Oh, oh, really? You're a fan? I am, yes, since way back. And I'm constantly tweeting lots of your weird records of the day and bizarre things you dig up. Oh, good. I know. And um, we even did a broadcast with Bri- for Brian when, were, when, when you guys were at Primavera. Right. Okay, yes, you did that. Well, thank you for being a friend of FMU. And I hear that you are pretty busy right now. Yes. Tell me what's going on. What's going on at the moment is, is still like it's a month and a half until the records actually, until these reissues come out after 35 years. It's blowing up. It's going absolutely crazy. I mean, I mean last week, the... About four days ago, in fact, the Washington Post ran a thing about that scandal that's breaking, the new payment for favors thing with the senators. And they featured one of our songs, Rural Prostitutes, as the kind of theme thing to go with that scandal. Oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, it's just, it's it's, it's, it's weird the way things just kind of hook, somebody just kind of hooks onto something and it just runs and runs and runs. And the reaction from across the world to these... I mean, it seems like we've chosen the right time after all these years to put the stuff out. It's bizarre. Isn't that funny? Yeah. How can you choose the right time after all these years? And well, what- there are very, very, very weird synchronicities with this band. I mean, it's, it's really weird because when we decided to try and play together again, we all wanted to do these songs that we did when we were really young, kind of youth club songs that we hadn't really, on this We Are Time album, that we... The band was mutating, so we'd, we only played them for about three or four months, right? And we really wanted to play, play them. So, but it's like the words that I'm listening to and singing are like suddenly keep on having relevance to something that's happened like the week before or something. It's like psychic archaeology or something. It's, it's, there's some really, really weird things. Well, somebody says something, and that word appears like two seconds later somewhere else. You know, it's, I mean, my granny was a clairvoyant, and we used to do this table wrapping on a Sunday and stuff. But I've learned over time to not try and read too many, not try and understand these things, just to let them happen. Sure. It's weird. Very, very weird. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's a million times weirder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we're recording this new stuff, and I'm, at the moment, I mean, the, the, t- the table in front of me, I've got like two days to finish this stuff, the lyrics, right, after mm. all this time. Okay. And it's, it's something that I do not understand, and I, I tend to hope I'm a fairly intelligent person, but what is ha- I don't understand what is evolving, and I'm just standing back like an ancient kind of alchemist and watching the golem grow, you know. You're just observing it all happening. Yeah, it is very weird. It's like, being, it's like you're kind of beamed into an alien planet, and you've just got to, yeah, you've got to, you, can't con- you can't project too many preconceptions onto things, otherwise it, the thing aborts. So then what would you ask an alien? Pardon? What would you ask an alien then? Are you listening to WFMU? <laughs> Very tough. We had a record label called On You. <laughs> What's the U for? Um, well, I don't think that anything that it, it stands for anything, although the U used to be... We used to used be. To be. We, you, you're going to use no, no, U's no. all the way through the conversation. No, th- this, is, this, is, this is a full thought here. Um, we used to be associated with a college called Uppsala College, beginning with a U. Yeah, and then you went online, didn't you? Uh, yeah, and it's just easier to sort of continue this way. We used to be a small, you know, local station with not that much throw. Luckily, we're close enough to New York City, so that always helped us. But many, many years ago, when we realized that it was going to cost a certain amount to continue to run the radio station and we could not get any more wattage, our station manager decided to let's broadcast online. And we're, I mean, I remember that meeting. We're like, all right. I mean, if you think that'll work, because I mean, I didn't even have a computer at that time. Yeah. You know. Oh, you've been there since the beginning. Not since the beginning, no. Uh, FMU has been around since the 1950s, actually. But I've been here si- since uh, 1985. Sat in that. You must be covered in cobwebs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't been sitting in the same room since 1985. I've been here since 1976. Let me out. <laughs> <laughs> You've been sitting there staring at that same piece of paper for those two songs. <laughs> Trying to work out meaning. <laughs> writing the same haiku backwards and forwards. There is no meaning. There That's is. what she said last night. <laughs> there is no meaning. There is no You're meaning. listening to WFMU. There is no meaning. Mark Stewart of the controls. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> That's well, what she said last night. I'm That's my sure. catchphrase. <laughs> it's my catchphrase. Every DJ needs a catchphrase. I don't think I have a catchphrase. Oh, come on. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little on the uh, sort of ADHD thing. 
you know, <laughs> and go all over the place. That's so. a catchphrase. Okay. All right. Jaguar children, we call them in, we, in England. We call them, it's the next stage in evolution is Jaguar children. Jag- oh, Jaguar children. Yeah, got yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Got it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. And that's one of the. Fun, I mean, again, I'm, you know, sorry to go back to the to the to the to the band again, but that is. I mean, the, again, one of the funny because I've been kind of doing stuff on my own since back in the day, since '79. Yes, since you we have. Broke up. Right. We were all still mates, but suddenly, kind of being, we were we were like a gang of like 13, 14 year olds that, that just decided that we were going to do something. So. Before that, there's this kind of piss taking. Do you know what I mean? There's this kind of damn. The, the the bass player said when he first met us, we were all speaking this invented language for like two months. <laughs> so th- there's what people don't understand about the pop group is the kind of fun of it, is, is the kind of jokiness and the and punk to a certain extent was kind of like that. Do you know yes. what I mean? It was that. Yes. Mm-hmm. It was that nonchalance. I've got this saying that there's the arrogance of power, but we had the power of arrogance. But also there was like constantly taking the piss out of everything that nothing was sacred and people don't get that sometimes do you know what i mean they, they they think it's kind of dour well i think the arrogance of youth is that yes that's and it may or may not be arrogance but um you i saw you play at tier three. Oh my god and uh with the lounge lizards yes and oh my uh, god and, and at hurrah also wicked yeah oh you're and, proper and i not really <laughs> <laughs> but um and I just remember like being you know not so blown away but but being able to relax cuz it yes. was the whole pose in New York right all like punk you know new wave what's cool what's not cool and anything that was british was like way cool and I was like wow these guys really don't care and it just really struck me as as very free Cool. And uh, and open and, and just wonderful. So what is it like, though, now performing with the pop group 30 years later? It's exactly the same. And in fact, it's, it's even weirder. I mean, because the thing is, for us, what we got from punk was I believed in this ideal of punk, which I don't think the people that were making it, the, you know, Leiden and Strummer, I kind of projected all my hopes and dreams and all the politics and all, the, all my enthusiasm onto this flag and we really thought it was going to give us a lot of freedom. And, and, just, and just after, so, and we were like one of the first kind of post-punk bands, you know, because we were, we were kind of playing as punk, you know, we, we were right on the cusp of like 77, yes, right? Yes, yes. But we immediately thought, oh, right, if it's going to be this free, we can bring in like stuff that we were really into, like James Brown and Ornette Coleman. And we mm-hmm. were really mad on Miles Davis's On the Corner, which we'd progressed to from funk because we were, there was a big, a dirty bass funk scene in Bristol. So we wanted to mash up, like, Noy, James Brown, and television's Little Johnny Jewel. We wanted to create our own kind of things. But it was always a kind of, it was always a kind of ritualistic, kind of cele- celebratory sort of release, the whole thing. So there was, we called it animal, we had this animal instinct thing. It was, really, it was like ADHD children jumping up and down on a, on a sofa and just letting it all out. You know? Yes, I totally get that. I yeah. totally, totally get and that. To be, and to be able to do that now is even weirder. It's like adult baby syndrome. So there, so <laughs> I'm standing here in my nappies. <laughs> I wanted to ask you if life or maturity or adulthood actually has changed your relationship with the guys and doing the music. Well, the funny thing is that all my life I've had this position, which I think I got from situationalism of, and Ornette Coleman, of unlearning, of kind of deconditioning and always questioning the construct that you become or, or the accepted truths that, you've, that you're drip-fed from the, from, the, from, the, from, the, from the cradle, right? Right. So I've always tried to do it kind of consciously and kind of question the aspects of hidden history and economics and politics and everything. And... And even kind of, you know, even, even the way your kind of brain accepts things. But what's happening now with this kind of being in this situation is something is happening which is, which is really utterly and truly not within my grasp. It's bizarre because, because of these crap, it's, like it's like a weird kind of tag wrestling match, WWF or something. Because these other characters have evolved, I'm suddenly in this room with these people who I kind of know who they are, but I don't really know who they are. And you know it's 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 quite a weird situation but it's 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 kind of it's, it's something that i didn't think was going to happen because when we 
Matt Groening from The Simpsons um, asked asked me to reform the pop group and Iggy to reform the Stooges for these festivals they have here called All Tomorrow's Parties. Right. right? Uh-huh. And I just immediately, I just thought of it as a kind of new commission because sometimes I'm thrown into these kind of things where I have to work with a Japanese performance artist, a kind of Canadian noise person, these kind of art commission things, right? But um, I thought, right, let, let me look at it without any preconceptions. And we all started talking. We said, we've got to try and make something different, something new. And it is... It's it's completely new. It doesn't. It's not the pop. It's it's. I don't understand. I don't understand what's happening. And for me, it's kind of disorientating. But it's it's weird, and I can't get. You know. But, but I know. I mean, we've got two weeks to finish this new record. I know in two weeks' time, that I'm gonna. I'm still not gonna understand it. But it's it, it, it's bizarre. It's a Frankenstein. I do have to say, just the idea that you're revisiting the pop group surprised me. Yeah. Just as a concept. Yes. So who started that conversation? I think it was somebody coming up to me. I was doing some gigs in Japan or something. It was, I, 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 the conversation, it, it, kind of, it kind of grew because over the time of, you know, when you're kind of traveling around doing whatever, I, I, bega- I began to understand what those records at that time meant to certain people, right? Yes. Because I can't really look at myself from a distance. But I began to understand that at a certain time, to certain people, it meant, it meant because I'm always thinking about the next thing, right? It meant something. Mm-hmm. And we've always kind of protected our legacy, and we've always controlled everything. And we said, if we are going to do it, this stuff has never, the pop group stuff has never been reissued. Right, I know. Never on CD, I, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's, a, there's another, you know, and, and, and we were always fighting for complete independence. Now we've set up our own infrastructure, and... You know, there's cool people across the world, the equivalent of your researchers back in the day, like they were in the, the late 70s. And it's kind of, it's really interesting. And hopefully we're, we're setting up, a, you know, we're working with a lot of people that were around us that work with the Swans. The Swans have done a lot of footwork on building up this kind of cool, kind of the new kind of alternative. Right. right? Yes. And we're working with a lot of people around them and there's some really cool distributors and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and amazing kind of artistic festivals in Europe when you can just do... Cr- it's, it's, it's wide open at the moment, right? Mm-hmm. And it seems that somehow the pop group were responsible for energizing a lot of these kind of mad people, right? I'm sure. Uh, and, and so then, so when, so when Matt Groening kind of said on his wish, wish list, said be us and that, I, I kind of looked at it and I, I thought... Right, like I was saying, can I look at this as a kind of commission and, and break again? And again, I've got this concept that taste is a form of personal censorship. Can I go against, because I thought it was a weird idea. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? But yes. then I thought, I should flip it. I'm constantly flipping things and trying to do things that I don't want to do. Right. So then when you were really faced with that, could you then again revisit the pop group like with wonderment? Like, wow, yes. what are we going to do? Complete wonderlust. Uh-huh. And yeah. not and not trying to do what you were doing before. I mean, I'm, no. you know, I haven't seen any of the shows that you've that you have played since. We didn't know what we were doing. We still don't know what we're doing. And the thing is, the 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 the, the catalyst of the characters, the cross of the characters, is like pit bulls. It, it is it is something. <laughs> I mean, I can't analyze it. All I know is a human being. You know, because yes. I don't really think about music and being in a band. I just think about being in situations. Right. Right. And if I'd been to the pub and been at a party and I was stuck in the kitchen, a little bit drunk with these people, we would be kicking off. And we're kicking off. Everybody's got a different attitude. Everybody's got a different this. And we're kicking off. It's like facing up to each other. And it's it's weird. You know, because things it is it's uncomfortable, which is interesting. Nobody needs to do it. Nobody. Everybody's as fierce as I mean. I was just, just before you rang up. I was argue, I was arguing with Gareth about something, but it's exactly like we were when we. There's so many strong characters in that band that it's cool. Mm. Now, now, when you get back together with and you're having a dialogue with Bruce and Gareth and Dan, do you find yourself acting younger? Um. I don't know. And I'm not I mean, sure. I always actually, I don't okay. know. I don't okay. think I've ever grown. Yeah. I don't know. Right. I, don't, <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I don't know what young and old is. I mean, what? basically, the things I was getting into when I was 14, like weird political ideas and, and, and uh, Baudelaire and, and just, you know, Gramsci and stuff, I'm still into. I'm still trying to understand all sorts of weird things. I don't think I've changed much, you know. Oh, okay. Okay. But who knows? 
I mean, I don't know. I don't understand. There, there was an actor called Victor Mature, wasn't there? Wasn't it? I don't understand this <laughs> mature thing. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'll be saying that when I'm 80. Well, that's okay. So when you play together, do you actually go... Play like, with each other. Yeah. When you, are, when you have... Does the pop group have actual rehearsals? Uh, yes. Okay. So you yeah. go, all right, we're, we're going to do... Yeah, we we yeah 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 we do yeah okay yeah yeah I mean the thing that again the thing is people don't understand is that we wanted to be a pop group and we were and underneath the chaos and stuff are quite strong kind of pop songs and a kind of Brian Wilson sort of thing but it's a deconstruction you know you have to have a strong foundation in order to better destroy it well and I think that you were very successful in that sense because where you were in the timeline of punk you guys really blew up really quickly yeah you had a lot of opportunities very very soon in the career of the band yeah and you were all really young yeah we were touring with patty smith and pear uber when i was at school yeah i mean what's that like going back to school and like you got the kids who have their hobbies and you've just been on tour yeah well i mean i don't really talk about it with my mates they didn't know where i'd been you know because you know in Bristol, is, with our posse in Bristol, even with, with like mates like Massive Attack, everybody kind of stays, they don't talk about what they're doing and show off to the other people that are like carpet. It's, it's a weird thing. Mm. You just want to fit in and go back in to feed again, if you know what I mean. You don't, you don't stand there in the corner bragging about, and no, none of my mates are impressed by that sort of thing anyway. Right. You know what I mean? It's like... Well, I, I wouldn't even suggest that it was bragging, but just sort of like in terms of growing up, being a teenager and not having the same teenage situations that yeah. 99% of, you know, your your school yeah. chums did, you know. Yeah, I was just wondering. I, mean, I don't know. I, I don't know any different. I mean, it's like for me, it was like right. joining the Merchant Navy. I don't know any different. Right, sure. The reissues... This is your project. You said you have like all the distributors and all this stuff. Yeah. Is the pop group themselves doing this? And this yeah. is through Pledge Music, but it's well, yeah, pop- and through we've we, we, yeah. There's a new label being set up called Freaks Are Us. Oh, okay. Right, which is which is which is hopefully going to do other stuff as well. It's not specifically kind of just for us. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, it will be like an umbrella for lots of other cool stuff. I mean, we're checking out other stuff, and so we're in complete control of everything. I've even been feeling the paper. Of, and we're aligned in England. We're aligned to this thing called Campaign Against the Arms Trade. So there's going to be speeches at all the all the concerts about these proxy wars and blah blah blah. And mm. so it's kind of old school in the sense of how it was back in the day. But I've always been like that anyway. So. Right, right. So that hasn't hasn't shifted. No. And how did you choose? So so there's two releases. Yeah. You're re-releasing We Are Time, and then there's Cabinet of Curiosities, which has uh, nine tracks. Yeah. Including where there's a will. No, the no. thing is, when we were kids, we didn't. We had a philosophy of never putting singles on albums. <laughs> so where there's a will, we, you know, we basically we've just been going through. We've been me and, me and Gareth Sager have been shifting through, tracking down tapes from like people's attics and people. There was a guy who was running a really good website in America, who. Um, sadly died but they, mm. you know we've, we've just been checking out repositories of like people across the world that we knew kind of had stuff right and trawling through loads and loads of stuff and we've discovered in, you know for cabinet of curiosities a lot of kind of interesting curiosities but we put where there's a will on there that's the only thing that's ever been out before on that, right. on that compilation just because it was floating on its own and it didn't fit anywhere else because mm-hmm. we never had any singles on but the second track she's beyond good and evil is is our trademark track right yes but this is the first recording of this is the first version of it we did with andy mckay from roxy music because all of us were very big roxy music fans back when we were like 12 or 13 mm-hmm. right and immediately we were trying to work with john kale or or and or king tubby or andy mckay andy mckay that was was a role model he was like the he was like the first kind of punk he was wearing like 50s clothes playing this m- mad kind of rockabilly saxophone and he was our hero really, more than Brian Ferry or Eno or anything. And he did a couple of solo albums, which haven't really been appraised that much, but we loved him, and we got, we got to record Beyond, uh, Beyond Good and Evil with him, and the, the version had been lost, but we'd, somehow somebody found the original tapes, and we're really, kind of, we're really excited about that, because immediately after those sessions, we started working with Dennis Bavell, the British dub meister, right. right? And the whole sound kind of changed because we started working with Darb and in the studio and everything, and that was the version that came out. 
the later on with with that was the first single but it's we're really shocked at finding some of these things and there's songs that I didn't I haven't I didn't even know were on tape there's a song called abstract heart which is a kind of weird kind of it's a kind of deconstruction of take five by Dave Ber- 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 what's his name Burbeck Oh, Dave Brubeck. Yeah, Brubeck. Yes, Sorry, yes, yes. My, my American is not so good. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's like backwards jazz. I mean, we call it mm-hmm. spaz jazz <laughs> right. in, in England, or death jazz. It is bizarre. There's another song that I heard about what happened to Karen Silkwood really early on before, the, before it became public. Somebody gave me, you know, lots of my mates were like weird underground journalists and running kind of mad magazines and stuff at the time. And somebody gave me this thing about what had happened to Karen Silkwood when she was trying to expose these irregularities at the nuclear power place she was right. working at, right? This was yes. like ages before, before it came out in the press or something. So I just kind of, this, this song Karen's Car is, is just a verbatim kind of thing of what happened to her, that somebody just passed me this information, right? Another song is this um, amnesty report on the treatment of Irish political prisoners, you know, out of everything we found, I'm enjoying it because, like I like I said, I mean, the reason I make music is because I don't hear this stuff or these juxtapositions or these kind of mashups anywhere else. So it's interesting for me to listen to. I'm a fan. It's bizarre. Mm. It's bizarre because, uh, and then you realise why you were doing it, and it's 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 even weirder. It's like looking at yourself in a in a in a third hand. It's like being in a parallel universe and looking at yourself and not knowing it's and enjoy, and not knowing it's you and enjoying it from. It's like honestly, sometimes for me, it's like listening to when I used to get these velvets bootlegs when I was a kid. You know, I mean, I'm as excited about it as anybody else. Good. And it's great to be able to make find all these old medieval woodcuts and 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 do it properly. Hmm. What's the, you're it's doing? It's a kind of ritual of redemption. That's what we're saying. Oh, the cover. Are you talking about the cover of the Cabinet of Curiosities? Have you seen it? Yes. The monster. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I think that's what people worship. I think that's what the Knights Templars worship, from my research. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. I'm not sure if I'm that. There's too many. That monster's got way too many heads. I think. I think to uh, to to worship. So so you have had a hand in every aspect of of these releases then of course <laughs> every single Beautiful. aspect of even putting them in the boxes i remember back in the day at rough trade and stuff we used to do like potato prints sit on the floor with the raincoats and the slits and like yeah for sure oh, yeah. and it's a, it's a, it's a, you know like i said when we said we were going to do it we've all said we're going to do it properly it's not a token thing you know it's right we've got like a two-year plan of what we're going to do how we're going to do it and this new stuff is on a mission of its own and i think if if people trust us then I think there, there's these people that we call kind of sleeper, sleeper cells that are in quite strong positions of power from our generation or, or younger people right. who are kind of not pop group fans. We call them comrades. And, you know, like people are opening doors onto like cool TV shows in Europe. And, you know, it, right. I think we can do what we always wanted to do back in the day. We had this situation, this idea of being an explosion in the heart of the commodity. And that's just like, well, people, our generation now, are in positions of power. It's yeah. like it's like when you hear, you know, old songs that you like on TV advertisements. Yes, you know who's put them there. Right, right, exactly. And and there's there's that that continual debate of people, oh, they're selling out, blah blah. It's like, well, I'd rather have that musician who I adore make money off of that. It's not even so, the money. It's actually it's 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 holding the power that it's being an antidote, so somebody else doesn't take it. Like I'm saying, there's that saying that it only takes for good people to do nothing for evil to prevail. And some of my friends who are like holier than now, kind of vanity publishing, like we're punkier than you. We're not going to engage with this, that, and the other. Right. I'm not engaging with this, that, and the other. But I think we can. There are powerful people who've decided to roll up their sleeves and get down and dirty. You know, and you've got to engage with those mothers. Well, yeah. There is something about the the sort of the low level that it's really more about ego than anything if you're not yeah. really getting it out there. And the pop group does not seem like a a collective that would stand back and be like, oh, well, we don't know how this no. is going to go. It's like you guys pretty much, the idea that I get is that you pretty much plow forward from how, what, the way you spoke about your own personalities. And yeah. that's that's awesome. Yeah. So... And we're, and we're strong enough in our own system 
that we can we can front it. Do you understand? There's no cracks. It's like a special forces unit. Do you understand? Right. We've got enough support from like you know over the years with like rough trade and mute and it's our people. It's our system. It's our side. It's our side of the coin. And it's time that we re-engage with it. And the pop group can be used as a battering ram for all sorts of different ideas. You know, <laughs> I or love ideal. that. Honestly, yes, <laughs> the battering. It's true. I I totally. And I, that's how I feel useful. I mean, because mm-hmm. you know, it's. I, when I was a kid, I wanted to try and do something that, I, that felt a little bit useful because I think each generation has a responsibility to try and do something a bit useful. You know, I don't yes. want to die and think I haven't done anything at all and just, uh, you know, consumed or been uh, apathetic. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. So apart from the music and the band thing, it's give, it gives me a sense of worth, but it's not for, it's not for us, if you, if you know what I mean. Yes, it's, it's, for, it's, a, it's the bigger picture. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, yeah. it sounds a bit bloody, yeah. Well, and then, so what, what is it that makes a difference to you? How do you mean to me? Like, like to you, you know, like to continue that thought. It's like the, the pop group being, being bigger and being more of like, like a global, like a... Like well, a, just seeing what's happening in the world and the, and the complete and utter nonsense and lies that this society is built on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pulling the curtains back in the morning and seeing what the, you know, what the idiots are doing to the world. It's just, it's embarrassing. These people are, you know, they, they, they seem to have no intellect. They're just, it's, 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 it's idiotic. I mean, they're not even doing it right. If they're trying to enslave us, they're not even doing it right. They don't even know what they're doing. They're all fighting amongst themselves. It's, it's, it's nonsense, you know. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. I, I'm just... I'm, I'm not I, blaming you. I understand. You better not be blaming me. <laughs> <laughs> WFMU, you are the problem. Right, yeah. <laughs> Indie no-hopers. No. Go get a job. <laughs> Go get your hair cut. I do it. Well, yeah. <laughs> Talking to me, boy. <laughs> For you in life, what is it that moves you? Just James creation? Brown. All right. What you were just talking about before, about, you know, what's going on in the world, what moves you to action? Tragedy. Tragedy. Mm. There's people sat in offices making decisions that people are going to die mm. for their own greed or their own avarice. And I, you know, I don't really get that. If I was a kind of tyrant or a kind of digital dictator or something... I'd realize that at least giving the people a little bit of water and a, and a TV, they'd be happier zombies and they'd work harder for you for zero hours contracts like they have in England. But they're not even giving them that. I mean, you know, in the, it's, it's, like they're pulling, it's, it's getting medieval. They're pulling up the gates and leaving nothing. It's like a scorched earth policy. But, again, I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's that side. But also, there's, I'm, I'm very optimistic. And, and, the, and, the, and the point of the, the pop group, and, you know, we're doing this big concert in our hometown soon. Yes. And, the, and like you're saying, when you saw us in New York, it's, there's a kind of celebra- celebratory kind of uplifting energy from the thing as well. It's all just not dour. It's, there's two sides to the story. It's weird. Well, and one is your opinion about what's going on, and then the other is what you're doing about it. So your opinion is the sort of sad, like, oh, my God, like, look at this. But what you're doing, the action that you're taking is more, is positive. Thank you. Yeah, but, I mean, all I really want to do when I was a kid was to make some really brilliant, uplifting music, hmm. right? But then I thought, how about having something a little bit interesting, just bits of information, whether it's right, you know, just throwing some, like, cool stuff that people can get into that they don't hear in other channels or whatever, instead of just like, baby, let me drive your car. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Right, yes, yes. And for me, knowledge is a nutrient. Finding out about stuff like there's, this, there's a book company that a friend of mine over there has got called Feral House, Adam Puff, oh, Puffery, yes. right? Uh-huh. And research and all those things, you know, and even the stuff on, on, on your station. I'm constantly going around looking for, in, you know, I'm, I feed off interesting stuff. Mm-hmm. I are gotta you, sit down there. Are you, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine you doing like jumping jacks or something. Like <gasps> you've just gone for a run. <laughs> like a horse. It's a bit late here. It's dark here. It's, not, you, it's, it's early there, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's four thirty. Yeah. Thank you for for taking the call so late. What? I have to put my pajamas on at six o'clock in my adult baby syndrome, but I'm alright. <laughs> I'm waiting for the Eggman, as Devine said. Oh, right, of course. The Eggman! Very good. You'll wear that outfit, will you? <laughs> <laughs> but it's really funny. I was thinking, I mean, I was just thinking about how in a small town in, in, in England, in Bristol, and then talking to, like, 
over the years meeting like the kid from Primal Scream and Ian from Joy Division and the lads from the Mary Chain, how 14, 50 year old, 14 15 year olds in isolation in these, in these small kind of towns in England got stuff from America and made up their own kind of story. We saw some kind of divine films, little bits of stuff from like the Dolls or Joe Bryant and how we kind of dreamt our own reality. This is just before punk and kind of made something out of it. But you talk to these people, we, we, kind of, we all found these things on our own. Mm-hmm. And it's weird. You know, I remember getting the first television single, Little Johnny Tool, yes. right, in this little record shop, and I took it home, and it blew, it was like Technicolor. It blew my mind. It just it turned me upside down and blew my mind. And I played it time and time and time again. But, I mean, I, you know, I was doing that with a few reggae tunes as well. But it's, 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 it's quite... People don't realize that the, the, the impact that some quite obscure things in America, like Chrome and even mm. this band MX80 Sound, who, who, who this, yes. this company called Superior Viaduct are putting out, how in Cleveland, you know, in the, outsc- in bo- in the boondocks of Cleveland, there were these experiments which, which, which triggered us to do our experiments, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, I, I think that there is something about like universal mind and certain things happening almost at the same time in different yeah. locations. I do think that there is that there is definitely something something to that. Bloody hippie. <laughs> That's me. Whatever. <laughs> it's like punk never happened. It's all I, the matrix, isn't it? I, and I, the huge spider on the front of Cabinet of Curiosities rules us, yes. <laughs> We're all feeding platforms for them. Well, I think that punk was really, you know, just an... Which mean was. Was, is. Thank you. Well, punk the... Punk is a really weird term when you when you term it just with music, and that's why I say was. Yeah. Because I don't see... The term punk as a description of music is not what it used to be. So... Um, it's been co-opted. Oh, it's been, yeah... It's, it's been lounge chaired, you know. Declassified. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lounge chaired. Yeah. That's yeah. a good, I'm going to lounge chair you if you don't watch it. That's a good <laughs> right, term. Right, exactly. Steal that. There you go. <laughs> Just wheel over the oxygen. <laughs> but, Nitrous um, oxide parties. That was the funniest thing. We did this concert in Philadelphia after tier three. We went out to Philly, right? Mm-hmm. And we played in the Starlight Ballroom, right? I was just had listening through to the tapes for these compilations. And uh, when they made the Alan Freed rock and roll shows, right? Right. And um, so I'm singing all these songs about feed the hungry and for how much longer do we tolerate mass murder and we're all prostitutes and blah, 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 right? Yes. So I'm getting ready, psyched up to sing these things like 10,000 men, women, and children die of starvation every day, the lyrics at the time, right? Right. Standing there, suddenly this woman's on stage doing like a weird kind of burlesque kind of strip thing with these tassels on her breasts. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my! I, I, I thought, I, I, I said, what's going on? I kind of went up to her. I said, sorry, love, but I thought I'd let her finish her do her, whatever she was meant to be doing. Yes. And she came back. She, I can't do an American accent. She's going, my name's Lydia Laser. I'm Jim Dandy's. I'm Jim Dandy's girlfriend. I do this oh, at no. every gig, every band that play here. I'm saying, oh, sorry. Wow. <laughs> Black Oak, Arkansas. Yes. He was, Jim Dandy was a punk. Yeah. Yeah. Are they still going? Yes, they are. Are they good? Um. I don't know. I haven't seen them. What I was haven't... the crappiest thing that you were into before punk? I was talking to Mike Watts the other day, and he was into some weird arena sort of stuff. Oh, yeah, Mike Watts was, yeah, definitely. Cheap I, trick yeah. or something. Were you into anything math before punk? Um, yeah, I was, I was into rock. What's you know. rock? I'm still into rock, you know, I mean. What's rock? I grew up going, you know, seeing, like, Bad Company and Aerosmith. And, oh, you know, cool. And that kind of thing. But that's... Well, Aerosmith were nearly punk. I mean, Aerosmith came out at the same time as the Dolls, didn't they? Yeah, cool. they were mid seventies. I'm pretty much like a gig person. I love going to shows. Yeah, yeah. You know, back in the day, I was going out with a girl who was a journalist for the Melody Maker, and there was this thing called the North Sea Jazz Festival that we we, we, we went to at the same time we we were, we were making these records that were coming out. And um, so Miles played there, saw Dizzy when his cheeks blew up like a frog, and all these kind of <laughs> cool underground guys like Paul Motion or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But she and obviously Sunra was a real hero of ours. And she had to interview him for Melody Maker. And I was upstairs in the, in the room just kind of chilling out. She phoned up. She's going, Mark, can you come down here? It was, she was having high tea with Sunra. She's going, I don't understand. She, she's going, he's weirder than you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she said, can you just come down and talk to him so I can get something out of him, right? 
So I just went and sat down and he started telling me all about planet Neptune and his universe and something. She's got a tape of it somewhere, but it was like, oh, my God. Wow. You know, hang, hanging, hanging out with Sun Ra, wow. arguing with Allen Ginsberg about the, about, he said I was exaggerating the apocalypse and sharing a cab with Burroughs are like, you know, a cool highlights. Do you mm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, how did you uh, hook up with Kenneth Anger? Ah, now Kenneth, wow. When we were kids, again, seeing, there was a, there's this other guy called Paul Sharitz who did this film called Touching, which when there's just a pair of scissors cutting a, cutting a tongue. Right. There's oh. a, there was a there was this book called American Experimental Cinema. When I when I was like 14, I just go to these kind of after Sunday afternoon things in this cool kind of art center in Bristol called the Arnold Feeney. And it was the only place where we could wear punk clothes without getting people trying to fight us all the time. We'd have to hang around in the kind of art center bars without encountering all the kind of football hooligans. I mean, custom car commandos was just it just absolutely blew my mind. And then I uh, then I heard that Genesis from Throbbing Gristle, Gristle. Mm-hmm. right. Was, was organizing a benefit for him because he was a bit ill for a while, Kenneth yes. was. And so I kind of heard about that. And then I thought on that last solo album, but I just wanted to use certain people, instead of like samples or, or whatever, I just wanted to use certain people's characters because some of my things are like radio plays. And, and, and uh, some friends of mine have got this, were um, running this, this big art institute in Portugal. And we organized a kind of big retrospective for him. He'd done something about Alistair Crowley and a pop producer. Anyway, I was hanging around with him in Portugal. I just wanted him to play Theremin on one of the, one of the tracks. I also got Richard Howe. Hopefully on the pop group thing, we're going to get... I'm talking to Cecil Taylor's people at the moment. We're going to get Cecil Taylor to plonk something or other on it. Wow. Yeah. I, and I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And my girlfriend at the time had just sat there talking to him about children's cartoons. I mean... So, for me, he's a prankster. The juxtapositions, yeah. when he was saying that he was living at home and, and some Jehovah's Witness films came through the door and he just cut them into some biker footage he had. I mean, this juxtaposition. Mm. And, but for me, one of the real heroes is Maya Darren. Him and her ran this independent film distribution thing back in the day. But that film she made, Meshes in the Afternoon, that, again, like television's first single, just it was like, wow. And then she did that thing when she went to Haiti in the Voodoo Gods book. I was reading the Voodoo Gods book when I was like 15. Maya Darren is a legend. Another American experimental filmmaker. I mean, it's yeah, it's weird. Well, I I love all the people that you work with and get in, involved with, and that's why <clears throat> I I I almost I don't want to not call you a musician, but there's just that would be really limiting to just say something about like quote your music. You yeah, know? and. Um, and the kind of the magical and the and the mystical, however you call it, these this and these suddenly there's these weird feelings that happen. You know, I look round on stage and summit there's like a ball of light going across, like a sort of Tesla sort of lightning thing or something. That is the stuff which I mean I've never really talked about it, but that is that's what I'm here for, I think. It's bizarre. I mean I had to look at a film of this concert we did in Japan and I you know, I was hitting some weird I was doing some weird kind of yodeling and Gareth was playing some sort of backward saxophone, but then there was this space in the middle of the stage, and something was happening in, this, in the middle of the... It was, it's weird. Hmm. I mean, that is kind of... That, that, that magical space is, 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 uh, is another whole part of it. So you've mentioned this sort of magical, synchronistic yeah. sort of juxtapositioning going on. Yeah. Is it... You're just rolling with it. Does it scare I'm you? I'm loath Does to it... analyze it. I mean, once I did this, there's this, there's this, there's this. Um, a friend of mine runs this kind of chaos magic crew, uh-huh. right? And uh, you know, from my reading and research, it's all, it's, you know, the the the, the, the it hasn't got any provenance what they're talking about. But there is, there's something there which I, you know, I've done this. I've, you know, I've seen some things which I think, you know, like some. It's a bit like that. It's this horror film called Phantasm, where there's this kind of yes. revolving ball of light. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like that. And I think over the years, people of the Hindus put like elephant heads on it, and the Christians put some white guy with a beard. You know, it's, right. there's something there. Right. But I'm loath to kind of, I mean, who am I to, uh, you know, what kind of construct would analyze that? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, so but, but it doesn't frighten you as some kind of like, oh, my God, what's happening? Why should no. Okay, okay. I, I wasn't sure, because the way you were saying it, I wasn't sure if you were like, you use the word weird several times. And just I to try and explain it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, I, mean no. I could go into depths, but, you know, yeah. it's... That's it's, it's, oh, okay. You know, Christianity yeah. makes you frightened. I don't know. Christianity's weird. Yeah. 
<laughs> put in this. And so, so it's, I mean, it, it's kind of the word weird is sort of a wide net. And that's just why I wasn't sure if you were not fearful. You don't strike me as fearful. No. In any, you know, it's more like exploration, I think. But, maybe um, that, maybe it is. Yeah. So, so then if, if you could, okay, so let's go, let's move forward to the pop group shows because you guys are playing um, from Edinburgh to London in about a week's span late in October. So if there were something, say, supernatural or universally weird happening on stage, what would it be? If that's what, that, that is it. That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's yeah. this space. It's right. this, it's this, it's this in between sort of space. I don't, I, can't, I've, I've, I, 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 you kind of feel something, and mm-hmm. maybe it's coming from the, from the audience, or maybe it's, I don't know, I don't know. I, you know, there's this. I, I, I really don't know, and I wouldn't want to say what it is or where it's coming from or what you know. But it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting, and that is, I think that is a part of the kind of the ritualistic thing of kind of concerts. Well, and I think, though, in ter- if you mention ritual, though, rituals always had an intention. The way I'm talking about it is uh, they've just discovered... You, have you heard of Stonehenge? Of course, and I was there, actually, when there were people up further, like, further beyond, and my tour guide told me, said, oh, they're doing some research up there. They think that there's more. Yeah, well, they've just... They've yes. let that re- that's synchronicity. They've I, let that I research it, out yesterday. I did. I read it yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And they're saying that all the different waves of people had different ways of, ex- of expressing or trying to vi- of doing whatever they were doing. And I'm trying not to do that. Because like I was saying earlier on, part of the, po- part of the kind of pop group thing is to kind of strip off the masks. One of the songs we're doing in the studio next week was going about future primitive, whatever. Right. But who's right and who's wrong? Has there ever been a dawn of civilization? No, no, you know, it's like, what are these? Co- who's telling me this nonsense? Maybe that before they were more evolved. I mean, the more I hear about Sumeria and stuff, anyways, I, I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, if evolution is making weapons that can kill more and more people, it's not my idea of progress. No, it's not, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and what I was trying to get a beat on was what you felt the space, like the glow in the space was and if you wanted to actually take energy take responsibility for creating that energy or would I don't you know if rather... I, cre- I don't know if I don't know if it's I don't uh, I, I can drink it <laughs> <laughs> I'm as look I'm the, the funniest thing is that people are you know I'm as I'm as I'm as I'm the same as everybody else. I'm just watching these things. Do you understand right. what I'm saying? It's, yes. it's quite weird. I'm not like Jim Morrison or somebody saying this is to do with this and whatever. These oh, things no. happen. Some, maybe it can happen at a bus stop. Maybe you can. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. But, and I think that there's more. I think that there's, there, there could be more about the synchronicity and that kind of thing that, 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 um, that is there. I would, I, my guess is that it's not going to pop up at a bus stop. I think if you open, if you've got an open mind, yes, right, and you tear off the kind of onion layers of what you've been taught, mm-hmm. what they're trying to f- force you into doing, right, good, bad, right, wrong, blah, blah, yeah. blah, yes, 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 to become zombies for their automatums for their, you know, we got no value with the property of the machine, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Then you kind of your antennas go up, and you see, uh, you know, there's it's it's, it's like like, like you know, <coughs> like we were saying, there's a wonder lust. Yes. And sometimes you can see you can see wonder even in like concrete canyons. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When you perform, are you one hundred percent all there? Dying. No, no, you give yourself up to the thing. And that okay. is one of the things about music that I've always, always loved. Mm-hmm. Even, I mean, I remember when I went to Chicago, we, we played the Metro in Chicago way, way back in the day, right? Mm-hmm. And I went to some very early um, Chicago house, Acid Tracks, DJ Pierre Club or something, and just getting into that, getting into the kind of rhythmic, giving yourself into the waves of the music is something, again, that people are scared to do sometimes. People are scared to kind of give up their preconceptions again do you understand what i'm saying they, yes. it's like you know it's it's i don't i you can sound all hippy drippy doing it or, but if you can you know there's you can but there is a kind of there's a release in in the music 
Yes. I mean, I get it. I get it listening to this stuff right, and compiling the stuff. Even in the mastering studio, I was floating off and going into like different kind of mm. zones. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. And yeah. you can belong inside music. I mean, one of the best things anybody's ever said to me about, about my music or our music or whatever is somebody came up to me in the Midwest or something and was saying, and just, I, was having, I was smoking at the time, I was outside just getting some air or something. And this kid was saying to me, he's going... The good thing about listening to your stuff, Mark, is that I feel that I'm not on my own. I'm not an outsider. You know, obviously he was in some weird suburb somewhere, like what I was when I was a kid listening to Lou Reed. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And it, it, you get this sense of belonging, which is interesting about how you guys, Dangerous Minds, like you're saying, research back in the day, and some of these kind of tot totemic bands like the Swans and maybe the pop group. I'm saying that from a distance. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You can kind of... It's a community, and I'm as much part of that community. We're not leaders. I mean, that's what we got from punk. We're not, we're not, we, you know, we had this whole thing about reversing the, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. It's not, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an alternative mat matrix, really. But you were saying earlier about it being bigger than you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's not, it's not up to me anyway. It's up, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Right. It's everybody's, right. I mean, you can't do something, well, yeah, it's, yeah. No, and, and the fact Unity that... Unity is strength, whatever the, the Labour Party of England used to say. The fact that the music takes you and, that, and you allow yourself to do that, it's very lucky. A lot of people really don't allow themselves. Well, they should. You know. They should, damn it. So, 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 okay, so write for me, like, five rules for life. Mark Stewart's five rules for life, for, like, the human race. Like, don't, they should. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Don't do what they tell you to do. Okay. Break as many taboos as possible. Uh -huh. uh, try and br try and breathe. Um, what is it? Silver ionized oxygen. Okay. Uh, what was the other? Uh, yeah. Uh, if if something tries to communicate with you, don't be uh, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. uh, the hidden history of the world is quite interesting. Uh, there's actually a, there's actually shadow governments that are actually making all decisions that that the other people are on the, the payrolls of. The idea of the nation state is has been out of date since the medieval times. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. That would be is that five. Yes. That's Listen to WFMU. Oh, perfect. Six. <laughs> we top that off. Um, I think and do something. You do something. I mean, the whole point of the whole thing about punk is do something yourself. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. It's easy. That was the whole point for us when we saw Paul from the Clash with little stickers on his bass showing him where to put his fingers to hold the chords. That mm -hmm. gave us the, that enabled us and gave us the energy to get up in a little youth club and do it ourselves. And those those songs from those little youth clubs are now coming out in a couple of weeks' time, and somehow. The process is happening again, and all these young bands in England and Japan and stuff are referencing these experiments we made and go like savages and whatever, and going off and making experiments themselves like we did, and then we're feeding back off these things in Bristol. There's these whole new waves of Bristol-based kids that we're feeding off, and it's like one of those alchemical snakes where the head is feeding the tail, you know, eating the tail. Right, yes. It's, it's one big glorious cycle. I'm in May, I'm I'm really really enjoying kind of being in the in the flow of kind of of kind of representing some of this stuff at the moment because I, I think it's I think it's I think it's much more exciting now than it was back in the day. Back in the day, there was there, as you were saying, there were a lot of kind of egos and 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 you know the music scene's full of people that wouldn't be tolerated anywhere else. And there's a lot of music from that period that does not actually stand up. Yeah. And. Uh... And that is not true of the pop group at all. Thank you. You know. Put and, the back uh, on that. <laughs> Put that right there. <laughs> Again, I find it very, very, I mean, I've, you know, the thing is we've, we've always kind of kept our distance and we weren't really in it to kind of mythologize our own thing. And we've, you know, we've got this concept now of exploding myths and the few, whatever, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. But um, I don't understand these, how people say this and this is this and this and this and this. And at last, for the first time ever, our kind of story is being told. But we're telling a lot of we're telling a lot of the story about these other things that were going on at the time, which weren't really covered. So once they uncover our our hidden history, 
there's all these other really interesting things of, of like things which are parallel to us, which we're pushing up into this in we're an earth thing as well. So it's right. quite interesting. Yeah, the consciousness is going to go yeah. more uh, than Because up till now, it's only really been uh, other musicians that have, that have constantly gone on about us and kind of underground figureheads and whatever. But now the kind of the serious press are get, uh, beginning to see the story because other musicians will be going on about it, mm-hmm. then, the st- you know, and the story is going to be told once and for all. Quite, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. This may really be your time. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> How exciting. Ooh, I better get the feathers out. <laughs> well, Mark, I just want to thank you for spending thank time you too. with us. I know that you're aware of what the pop group stands for. And there's been a lot of documentation on who the pop group influenced. Yeah. And really just, you know, and me doing radio and just sort of seeing who's, who's done what. And you just have a unique way of blending sounds and consciousness, like, which I do, I do really want to thank you for being that battering ram at the beginning of, like, splintering music into... Well, you w- wait till you see what, I mean, you know, this, the stuff on this table and the ideas, I mean, I, and I'm not saying this has anything to do with the pop group, I'm just saying this mm-hmm. is a human being, the stuff and the mood that is everybody's in, like starting on Saturday morning and going on for the next 10 days when we're cutting this new stuff and, and the people that are getting behind us, like I'm saying, I cannot... I cannot believe what's going on. It's hopefully, we'll live up to the whatever the legacy is. You know, we hold it, and we hold it. We, it's very, very important. I mean, I don't, it's not going to sound like anything from before or whatever. But as human beings, everybody is very, very excited and hungry to to get in there and blow each other's heads off. You know, next week. Exciting. Yeah. That is really exciting. It's weird. Again with the weird. Well, good. <laughs> no, it's weird. It's weird to me. I never, I, I couldn't, have, I wouldn't have ever imagined, like you were saying, I would right. never have imagined being in that situation. But it's, it's, it's interesting. But it's, it's, we've all just got to keep, we've all got to just keep our temper and kind of, like I'm saying, kind of stand back and watch, watch the golem evolve, you know. Right. It, it gets to happen around you almost. It's like one of those weird yeah. clay things in those Harry, those Sinbad films. There's, yeah, there's, oh, the Ray Harryhausen. Yeah, yes. there's Medusa things. Yes, there. Yeah. yes, yes. Almost like that woodcut for the uh, yes. Cabinet of Curiosities. You Look at it. that, how we went full circle with that. Wow. That was good. You're getting a theme, theme hour. <laughs> King Biscuit time. Oh, goodness. You've got to make a break for the adverts. <laughs> good band, the adverts. Great band, the adverts. <laughs> oh. yeah. All right, sir. Do you reckon you got enough? I think I do. And it sounds like, whereabouts are you? You're in? We're in New Jersey. We're right over, cool. the, we're right over the, ridge, the river from New York we City. We played New Jersey. We played in, uh, in Asbury Park. Oh, yeah, you did the ATP. Yes, yes, that's right, yeah. It sounds, I mean, we, I, I wouldn't, it sounds like we're going to be out there next year, so. Good. Hopefully come and say hi. Oh, you'll have to come and say hi. I would like you to guest DJ here. I'd love to. I thought that earlier on. I thought, I thought, I was thinking about some of these things. I was thinking, oh, I hope somebody can let me play Albert Ayler and Mad Funk. And, yeah, wicked. Yeah. It's a funny situation to be in, but I mean, for me personally, because... Mm-hmm. It's, you know, I'm leading quite a solitary life at the moment. It's, it's a bit of social interaction with me, like just talking to nice people. And luckily at the moment, we're just dealing with, we're being very, very picky and, and kind of trying to support, like we did when we were kids, the, the, the good things. And everybody can kind of push forward together, you know. Yes. Well, and thank you for supporting FMU and for, no and problem, for giving respect. us the thumbs up. Had some awesome gigs. Well, those are in October. And I guess the, um, the records come out, is that the same week, October? Yeah. I'll listen to it before I hear this. <laughs> So when, when is this going to get you? I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that you want to say to the listeners or to the world, Mark? Please support you guys, because you guys, you know, it's, you, you guys are like oh. one of the only kind of non-corrupt, non-censored channel, channels that are out there. I mean, the more people support free speech, the better. Thank you for using your time to actually pat us on the back. It's not a pat, it's, it's a necessity. Because everything yeah, is exactly. kind of advertorial or being co-opted. You know, it's become the, the, what people think is the alternative is a bunch of fakes. <coughs> He's speaking here. to the mirror here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a breakdown. How's it looking? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
fear. I see fear in the mirror. Perhaps oh, the last no. enemy is me. I'm getting a song. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Good. There you go. Go back to those two pieces of paper. Mark's... Two? There's boxes. <laughs> two there's about 50 boxes full of notes. I, I scribble oh, okay. on cornflakes packets. Everything has got like... I was envisioning two pieces of paper sitting on a table. Oh. And you're just... You know, if life was so simple. So simple. It could be. If you were... Um, yeah, a Taoist or something. Yeah, sure. C- come the revolution. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. I expect you to visit us when you come out here. I will. I salute you across the uh, across the airwaves. And I salute you across the airwaves as, as well. Thank you for your time. Cheers. All right. Bye.